26 of my building the black pearl wall scenario version and as you can tell by looking I've made some pretty good progress starting at the bow of the ship one thing I will probably change you can see there's a little extra copper showing through on the anchor I'm probably going to miss that with a uh, flat black spray paint just to give it some aged look to it and that's not necessarily where the anchors are going to go I changed all these ropes and I'm using chain instead I started placing cargo indiscriminately at places around the ship none of these are glued in place they're just um, just trying to get a feel for what I want to do where I want to put things now I'm moving into where the lifeboats are and very happy with how this work turned out you can see the oars how I darkened them with a little bit of uh, flat black paint and filed them down I think I uh, did a short video on that there's a bag here a little bit to the left like a flower bag that's too light colored so I'll end up dusting that some but I do like the uh, the looks of the lifeboats they're tied down kind of an X rope over the top of them similar to what I did on these small barrels the lifeboats are not glued in place the rope is holding them in place well enough that way if I ever wanted to take it apart and take those grates off I could do that working towards the captain's area and the upper deck I don't know if you can see I've decided to leave the doors open to the captain's quarters I've made um, a water bucket for drinking water at the bottom of the stairs. You also might notice, and this was thanks to a viewer's suggestion, each cannon would have a bucket of water to clean the bore of the cannon. So you can see I've added buckets at each station. Just outside the captain's quarters, you might see that uh, someone's brought him a prepared meal with a couple bottles of rum and some salmon fish. Again, that is not glued in place. It's just uh, where I'm starting my ideas. The ship's wheel is in place. So is this little cabinet. And you might notice to the right, there's a roll of parchment and paper. On top of the cabinet, there's also some loose papers. If you could magnify that really large and look at it, I was able to download some of the parchment of the Dead Sea Scrolls that were discovered. And that's what I used to uh, make those antique papers. To the left of that cabinet, I've made a weathered treasure chest that's been recovered. And again, that's using that copper leaf and then aging it inside the chest. You can see there are gold coins. I made several of those chests uh, both opened and closed and here you can see on screen the assortment that I've made in different sizes and I'll just decide where to place those or I can use them on this ship or a different ship. I noticed the lower part of the ship was too clean and too neat and tidy so I've gone ahead and used my airbrush and darkened that quite a bit. As far as the lighting on the ship and in the lower decks, I made it look like candlelight. I did not use those lights to illuminate so you could see. I just wanted to look like actual candles or lanterns in the ship itself. And that's true also back here in the captain's quarters. I've got a camera that when I do the very final episode, I might be able to go into the captain's quarters and, and below deck and it's uh, on the end of a wire and it's a very small camera so I'll try and work on that. I've tried to make sure that I've got the right amount of stain on everything. I've also completed putting tongue oil on pretty much everything that I wanted to, to get it on. I do find these little ports fascinating that open up for uh, I guess water that splashes into the ship. 
they just fascinate me that they're actually operational. I hope that gives you a pretty good view of how far I've come along on this build. You might notice that in the front, I've not yet put the uh, the angel that is on the front of the ship. That will be the very last thing that I do. I'm cheating a little on the yard arms. I put one of those wires, it's like an eye bolt. I was able to mark the center of the yard arm, drill a hole through it, drill through the masts, and that'll hold that there, but I can also maneuver it this direction. That's what I did to all of them, so they're all in position. I don't know if you can see all of them, but I'll be able to maneuver them to uh, do the rope work and get them right in the right position. In the last episode, I had mentioned how I actually messed up all these single pulleys by just looping the string without having a little round part on the end of it to hook to or to tie to. I've had to correct that. I've tried a couple of things. This was my first attempt and I just used a little piece of copper wire and made a loop on the end that I can uh, tie a rope to. And then more recently I've switched to a needle threader and I was able to take this device and get it under the thread. I was able to pry underneath the thread like so and stretch it. I've been able to then pull the string through that bottom piece of the pulley. I've had some failures but there it comes, and then I just tie a knot, a little CA glue so it won't come apart, once that dries I'll cut that tag off and then that'll give me what I want. Here's an example of that. Right there at the bottom is where I tied that rope on and now that will go down through this pulley, back up, through that pulley, then this goes down and ties off at one of the belaying pins down below. My plans and how I'm doing rope work continue to evolve. So what I'm doing now, I started numerically, and this happens to be plan three. And plan three is where it starts showing these points, and this is the deck of the ship. So you do this rope work, which I showed earlier. One, two, and then three is what holds the mast in place. Those go down to one, two, and three. So if I go to plan number one, it's all laid out here. You can see one, two, and three. So I've been putting those in place. I'm following it numerically throughout the entire ship. That's it. Part 26 is in the books. This is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.